one thing that I've experimented with a lot is just the power of crowdsourcing. The new technologies that people my age are so fluent in and, and are growing up with, and honestly now, um, you know, people are younger than me and more fluent in those technologies. What is this Snapchat you speak of? Um, but the new technologies that have empowered this generation, I think both for good and for ill, um, can also be used to listen to them more closely. So, you know, for both companies and government institutions, you can crowdsource your decision making a lot more. Um, it's something that I did at the State Department. We actually, you know, we didn't have the resources from a centralized budget to do new programming. But what we did do was say, hey, for the existing programming we're doing, um, let's set up youth councils at embassies and actually bring in the young people who, you know, probably still want to kill us in a lot of cases, but also want to be heard. Um, and we had these incredible stories in you know, North Africa and the Middle East where young people, uh, often with a lot of skepticism about the United States, were coming in and designing programs on the ground that typically would have been designed by you know, Beltway bandits in Washington. So there was a lot of, of outsourcing the problems to the people experiencing the problems themselves. Look, we didn't experiment beyond a relatively small level of resources, um, and the question would be for the you know multi-billion dollar infrastructure projects, um, is there the institutional capacity with local young people to actually execute on the things we want to execute on? Um, you know, maybe not. But I, I do think that um, in a lot of cases, the top level decision making whether it's in the government or at a private company, uh, could benefit from an injection of youthful rebelliousness, or at least a clear view of what the new realities on the ground are.